Yay! We old but people. We need to stick together. We need to stick together. But yeah. So uh, I'm really excited to be here because we're talking about my favorite thing in the entire world, which is crackers. It's crackers? Uh, it's Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it is specifically uh, crackers that have holiday connotations. Oh, oh, you mean like those uh, those holiday crackers? Yes. Specifically, magic holiday crackers. And they just come up straight to your door. They like, come to your door. Dun, dun, dun. It's the tale of the magical crackers. Magical crackers. Uh, like me! <laughs> oh! I get it. So this appears to be some sort of um, uh, promotional uh, item made by Nabisco. Uh, Nabisco, and uh, if you don't know who Nabisco is, they're uh, the National Biscuit Company. Yeah, that's what it stands for. Does it really? Yes. Oh, they they shortened it. Yeah, it, it Nabisco. Oh no, wait, no. Uh, N- yeah, Nabisco is the National Biscuit Company. I was thinking of Keebler because Keebler was actually seven different bakeries that came together, and they decided that Keebler was the catchiest name among them. Really? Yeah. This has been uh, history of brands. Well, well, um, it's a good background information because we're about to go on a cracker journey, and you need to know that um, uh, Nabisco has. Uh, this is about a Christmas visit by three different giant crackers. Uh, it, it appears to be when we looked at this, it looked like they were trying to do the cloudy with a chance of meatballs thing. Yeah, it, look, it looked like, and then it turned out they actually were. It's the actual illustrator of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Ron Barrett. Ron Barrett, who uh, is a, you know, a, not, not a household name, but he got a movie yeah. made. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, anyone who's grown up with books will recognize the style. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, you see that His kind of. distinctly kind of woodcut look to it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this one, uh, basically, it features the three most distinctive Nabisco crackers, uh, Ritz, Triscuit, um, uh, uh, Saltine. Wheat Thin. Square. Oh, Wheat Thin, thank you. That's the, that, which is one of the few puns you can make on my name. Hey, Wheat Thins! Oh, yeah, you're right! People actually yelled that at me once because, you know, because I have one of those names that you, doesn't rhyme with butt or fart, so they have to... That's incredible. That's that's, <laughs> that's an incredibly long reach to be mean. Yeah. I mean, uh, besides, I like wheat thins. Yeah, they're they're not they're a perfectly cromulent cracker. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with wheat thins, you know. Um, I like Triscuits better, I admit. Well, yeah. I mean, if I had to pick of the three, wheat thin would be my last choice mm-hmm. uh, because when you want a cracker, you do want the buttery taste of a Ritz. And Triscuit is a good thing to eat if you um, are a um, you know a young college kid on the go living in an, a strangely spacious apartment. Yes. Uh, where you're warned never to eat at the dorms. And this this is a very belabored callback to a Triscuit commercial from like 1997. The one so. with all the the cheese melted in all the little nooks and crannies. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then there are a bunch of like you know college kids hanging out talking about the importance of Triscuits instead of like eating meals. Um, <laughs> Because uh, Triscuits are health food, I guess. They're healthy. They're healthier than most of the stuff you can get in a dorm, I would think. Yeah, yeah. Avoid the freshman fifteen by eating just Triscuits. <laughs> or, I guess is the the moral of of that commercial. Um, and it wasn't a commercial for low fat Triscuits, ironically. It was weird when I found out that low fat Triscuits were a thing because I assumed that Triscuits in general were low fat because they're good for you. Yeah. Uh, that's a lie. It turns out they're not good for you. No. Uh, so anyway, so how did we do this? Do we read the book? Or? Oh sure, let's read. Okay. Lots of moms get it. No, I'm sorry. Lots of moms get annoyed during the holidays. Mine never did. Maybe it was because we had these big magical crackers in our house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, see, that's the problem. That's why your mom yells at you at Christmas for making too much noise. You don't have any big magical crackers! So, apparently, oh, they show up during the holidays every single year, usually on Thanksgiving Eve. Thanksgiving Eve. A Ritz, a Triscuit, and a Wheat Thin. They were the biggest crackers you ever saw. In fact, they were ginormous. The craziest thing was they magically grew back, even if you only took one little bite. Um, okay, so, so... <laughs> I th- I thought they were guests. It looks no. like they're showing up to like, hi, we brought uh, we got we brought ambrosia salad. Yeah. Well, they seem to be like holiday visitors, like the three magi. Oh, something. okay. And they they bear gifts of themselves. And oh, it's getting very like um, uh, Eucharisty here. Oh. Since you're literally <laughs> eating the body of these <laughs> night visitors. 
and it magically regenerates, apparently. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as a lapsed Catholic, this is definitely speaking to me. Uh, they it lasted through day after day of snowball fights. Uh, I like how they're actually throwing the snowball through one of the little perforations in the Ritz. That's a that that uh, that uh, child, I guess. Um, uh, presumably, it, presumably, child. it's uh, you know, uh, not to not to rag on Barrett's style, but we've got a very kind of like uh, Struvel Pater quality into this particular illustration. Well, you yes. can't tell the age of the uh, the person. They're well, you know of... how every line you add on an illustration uh, adds some age to the person? Yeah. This kid looks like he's 90 on one side. Yes. Well, that, that, you're right, exactly, with that little like mark uh -huh. right there, suddenly this is like a geriatric instead of, uh, instead of like a youthful um, personage apparently. Yes. But yeah, that's an amazing uh, angle there, yes. going right through that hole. In fact, actually, I'm I'm a little well, I'm a little confused about exactly where these this kid is in relation to that because he appears to be over kind of over here, but he's getting his hat hit. So yeah. Um. Okay. So it's not not entirely uh, clear. Uh, 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 I can't I can't work it out either. Yeah. I'm I never took trig. Yeah. The angles are a little a little strange here. Um. They stood up to Uncle Lou's lawn in my day stories. So, um, this particular illustration uh, I like because in the background you can see mom fisting the turkey, <laughs> which uh, I think is funny because it's a totally normal Thanksgiving activity. Yes. There's nothing like weird about that at all. It's just weird to see it drawn in. Yeah. It, they don't show you usually how like the sausage is made when you're showing a nice Norman Rockwell type Thanksgiving turkey scene. Sausage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, though it appears, so when they're standing up to his stories, what does that mean, though? Uh, oh, maybe they're uh, refuting us. Like, no, Uncle Lou, I yeah. was there. <laughs> it makes it sound like, you know, that Uncle Lou is the racist, like, uh, <laughs> relative who comes over and just starts ranting. And they're yeah. like, no, this will not stand. Yeah, especially because they seem to have a black friend over. Yeah, so, I mean, it's especially, I think it's... Or maybe it's his yeah. house. I don't know. Well, I think maybe it's... Maybe he lives here and the rest yeah. of them are... Our friends. Well, I think it's great that Triscuit is taking a stand against, uh, you know, that sort of casual racism that you yeah. see at all these these dinners and just... Actually, what is going on here in the corner? Uh, he's passing her a piece of the Triscuit she's behind? Okay. Yeah, uh, but I don't... There's Oh, no, I know. It all grows back. It oh, always right. grows back. That's true. So we never actually see it um, in, in uh, you know, before its, pr it's pre-cut um, scene. No. It's stay. Okay, so that's good. Uh oh. Hey. Here comes Apologies trouble. if the camera falls over. The cat just came in. <laughs> oh no. Well, she's going under the bed. Okay, she's yeah. good. All right. Even our late night board game battles with friends. Uh, what board game are they playing? Um, is it, it looks like. Um, looks like. Is a, it a, a square version of Trivial Pursuit? Maybe it's Monopoly. Yes. It looks like it's it's the game of life. I don't know. I really don't know what this is. Oh, here's an illustration of the uh, he snapping off a piece and it yeah. just like ding goes right back. Um, I'm really interested in that guy sticking his hand through the ritz. Yeah. In the background. You think he just like punched a hole through the ritz to take a piece and then dip it and then. Uh... That's what it looks like. <laughs> but I mean, that raises the question: if these crackers instantaneously grow back, his arm would be trapped. What's going on with the photos here? That's very interesting. <laughs> Because it, it puts me in mind, it looks, it's like Garfield's pirate hat, you know? <laughs> where, where, where they're just kind of sentient, like, which again, I guess in a world where we have sentient regenerating crackers, that's really not the weirdest thing. No, it's not. Though I am interested that the wheat thin has stationed itself, like, yes. on the mantle. <laughs> Maybe that, it got tired of being sna being snacked on for apparently. a minute. This kid's, and they decorated it. He's a, he's got a cool spy kit spy here. Spy kit. Yeah, so I wonder if that's going to come into play later on in our story. Turns out the kid's going to disguise himself as a cracker, and then it's going to be like a Return of the Killer Tomato. No, right. Revenge. Attack. They attack. Attacked. Attack of the Killer Tomato. Yeah. yeah. Has anybody got any um, cracker dip? Uh, attack. 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 Random words in this are big. Yes. Which, I don't know what that indicates, but... It's very uh, Geronimo Stilton. Yeah, yeah. 
It's like, when the, next they're gonna be like, these crackers are enormous! <laughs> Which they are. Um, I... Our whole family is crackers! <laughs> this scene... So, they, they don't have the turkey because the dog has ruined it. Um, oh, they're potatoes. I thought they'd garnished the turkey with hard-boiled eggs. Yeah, that, that's a little... <laughs> That's a little, well, a little different. Yeah, but, you know, this is definitely a unique Christmas setting. Um, I'm sweet. That's not. That's. <laughs> that's that is cute. not appropriate. To, uh, yeah. Um, especially on a snowy day. So wait, yeah, that is yeah not seasonally appropriate clothing. Though again, like um, maybe this is when they came to the California family's house for Thanksgiving. Who is Uncle Lou? Is I, I, so we still got Uncle Lou here. Yeah. Uh, have we we haven't identified any other family members? No, no, except for the dog. The dog's name is Eric. Oh, that's right. Spelled correctly. Oh, with a C. With a K. Oh, so it's uh. It's that's how my brother spells his name. So that's that's correct for me. Oh, okay, well, fair <laughs> enough. Um, so now the family is being kind of uh, barricaded in by these giant crackers. Yeah. Uh, excluding Grandma in the kitchen. There, I mean, she's really just being kind of shoved out of the way. I would think it looked a little bit ominous with the crackers being like, "Now we feed." Yeah, <laughs> it's like how to serve man. <laughs> Except that you could just eat your way through the crackers if they barricaded you in. So. Yeah, so I'm, they haven't thought their cunning plan all the way no. through. But uh, they are, uh, uh, what's, I don't know, what's the word? I was going to say invincible, but that would mean they can't break. What's the word for when you, oh, undepletable. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are, well, all right. Okay, so let's see. Um, yep, throughout our holidays, the those ginormously magical crackers kept our entire house happy. Uh, now we've got kind of a Richard Scary busy town cutaway here. Yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, they should have names. Uh, yeah. Projector, sports fans. Yeah. It's like um, if you lived in a castle uh, and you were a little mouse type thing. <laughs> um, now, now this one appears, man, this is a full house on Christmas. Um, the I'm Sweet Girl is, is boogieing there, uh, apparently decorating the tree? So it's not just Thanksgiving Eve anymore. They have continued throughout the holidays. Yeah, so apparently these are crackers who, according to tradition, they arrive on Thanksgiving and they remain. Uh, like the Icelandic Yule Lads who come at the beginning of the Christmas season and hang out until about New Year's. Wow. Yeah. But they only give you presents on one day each, uh, so I don't know what they're doing the rest of the time. It's it's like a really boring version of Hanukkah where you get all your presents on the on the last day. Oh, is that how it works? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you just got crappy presents for like a whole bunch of days, then a good present at the end. Oh, I don't know. I've, every every person I've met that celebrates Hanukkah celebrates it in a slightly different way. I, hmm. I heard of one of my friends said that they uh, got just one big present for the whole whole year, but it was a good one. Or that one person said that they got parts of a present over the over the course of the huh. eight days. I'll have to ask my wife how she does it. Yes, um, I think she usually gets angry when I when I when I accuse her of getting crappy presents most of the time, because my experience is you get guilt. Oh, you know. Um, let's see. So the giant. Cra so oh wait, I see what happened here. Man, this this guy uh, he's got really great aim. That yeah goes right through the. Uh, the Ritz cracker hole into the dip. Um, For a second, I thought that instead of a number, the uh, pool ball had this had the Nabisco symbol on it. But no, it's just the just oh, the shading. Right. <laughs> yeah, I actually thought it had um, an ampersand on it. <laughs> Or maybe it's the Death Star, I don't know. Yeah, uh, but everyone is having, you know, participating in traditional Christmas activities here, like watching football and playing billiards. And Uncle Lou is just shoving that cracker up the stairs. <laughs> I thought the crackers were self-mobile, but maybe not. It hasn't been established, has it? It's well, kind of a... Yeah, you know, that's a good question. They arrive and they regenerate, but we really don't know much about these crackers. If they're sentient crackers, no. do, they, do they... They just sort of appear facelessly, wordlessly. Yeah, annually. Yeah. They're, they're just there. They hover and they, they watch, judging. Uh, oh, okay, but then... Then there was the year the giant cheese showed up! That's a whole other story. That is def. That is um. So does the Misco make cheese? No. Okay, then I guess that's why they didn't feel like telling that. No, story. no. Was like, you know, the Dairy Council can make their own damn book. So um, having having. Oh, hey, and there are actually some like recipes. Recipes here. Uncle Lou's storied savory chili cheese meatball toppers. Okay. Uh, 
to... So it's literally stacking a meatball on top of a cracker? Apparently so. We've got Grandma's Secret Sweet and Spicy Cheddar Jam treats, too. Oh, pepper jelly. Okay. That sounds... Not really a jam. Well, no. I guess you... Well, unless you're British, where, je where jam is jam and jelly is cheap jam. Is that what it is? Yeah, they, they don't have... They don't use the word jelly. That's weird. Yeah. Eh, I'm glad we live in a normal country. Yes. Um... Interestingly, here's Aunt May's magical cheese and pesto bites, indicating one of our characters was named Aunt May. Aunt May. I guess they forgot to uh, identify which one is Aunt May. Yeah. I'm going to assume it was the girl in the sweet shirt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, she's she's really the standout character in this whole thing. To yes. Be honest. I mean, I like her style. That she just like she's just rocking this kind of sleeveless punk look. Yeah. You know, in the middle of Christmas dinner <laughs> or possibly Thanksgiving dinner. Well maybe, well, maybe her name is Sweet. That's why she's. She wants everyone, yeah, yes. just in case anyone in the family forgets who she is. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, I gotta say, like, do you feel like this book uh, accomplished its goal of making you want to buy Nabisco snack products? We're going to the store after this. <laughs> Nabisco!